Hello there. We're a double act. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of the sort of background uh, around Google. It's not an SEO. It's, it's more of a, a, a much more practical, much more local thing. And Leonor is going to give us the practical. So a bit of data waffle from me, and then really what you can do yourself when you get back. Those lights are quite hard to... <laughs> I like seeing people's eyes when I'm talking to them, but it's not going to happen. So, um, so how do you make Google love you? They're, they're, they're so critical uh, to, to being successful, effectively. Um, especially when you look at their mission statement. Google saying that they want to organize the world's information and make it accessible and useful. Very laudable. There isn't anyone of us around these tables that would like someone or some technology that would organize us. But behind that, like everything, there's a cost. So it is a challenge, but like every challenge, there's an opportunity. And we've got to look at it from that perspective. And we've got to put practical, simple steps in place that turns that challenge into growth and into opportunity. And to show you that size, here's a, some statistics that um, StatMonitor brought out in 2018, which shows, apart from China, which is Baidu, or uh, Russia, where you've got Yandex, Google pretty much dominate search territory in the world. This is the sort of little gaps are, are, are a bit odd because the data is from the 15 largest GDPs. GDPs, um, but ultimately the story is very clear to say: if you don't make Google work for you, you're really in a little bit of trouble. So that's our challenge for today. And the other piece um, that is a horrible slide. I'm really rubbish at putting presentations together. There's no color, no, no. But the reality is, um, this is the important bit. Google are now in your travel space. They've done it with Hotel Finder for hotels. They've recently started in vacation rentals. And reserve with Google is now what they're about. And actually, it's good news for, for you as a business because it allows you through um, the use of tools that we'll talk about, actually being able to reach people at a very early stage in their search to be able to go book. So if you didn't know about this functionality, if you're not currently using it, it's something that's maybe worth looking at. And there are some suppliers here, because in order to be able to appear there, you need to be, able to, you need to be working with some of Google's partners. And there are at least three suppliers here today who already do that. So either go back and look at your own web booking engine, check if they have got partnership with Google, or start maybe looking at whether you can uh, look to switch or use online travel agents, which will allow you to be there. And we'll sort of explore why that's so important. The other thing, and I think when you look at that data, that's so powerful. This is. Um, it's even out of date in terms of this is only 2015 versus 2017. But in terms of those searches, and apply that to you as an experience as to what that means. So this, the, the growth in near me, in now, in what's open, is all driven by mobile phones. And if you align that with the, with the fact that 80% of our visitors are not booking their experiences until about 48 hours before they're actually doing it. Unless you're sort of a sizable five-day, six-day trip, most of the bookings are being done as they wake up in their hotel or in their self-catering business, take out their phone and say, what do I fancy today? The weather's a bit war is warm. I could do an outdoor experience. What's near me? What's open now? And that's so critical. Uh, that being able to see you at those points in time. And that's where the challenge is, because if you think about Google and where, what's dominated on your mobile phone in terms of your online travel agents probably dominate the first three pieces of search. Google then puts in um, uh, the three-pack, and then perhaps you'll, you'll, you'll uh, appear if it's very, very local. So that's... That's a critical and how important it is in terms of your, how you must like Google and how do you do that. Leonor will, t will tell us some more about it. So in order to help all of this, Google have pulled together the knowledge graph. That's uh, effectively the, what 
that looks like. You've all seen it when we've done searches ourselves on, on Google. It's powered initially by Wikipedia, Wiki, Wikidata, or the World Fact Sheet. World Fact Sheet's a bit of an odd one. It's got CIA before that, if you're in America. It's the Central Intelligence, um, who actually pull it together and Google use it for some of their data. That's their current sort of data, their, their default data point. So the three pack, if you're doing all of the things right, if you're, if, if you're um, making best use of Google, they're returning that and you're for, for searches such as things near me, things to do, and you're appearing quite nicely in this, uh, this area. And when I say th three pack, you're wondering, there's six there. Well, Google are always changing things. This was something two weeks ago that I pulled off for Parsher, and it's showing six, which is good news because there's not just, we're not just relying on those three individual businesses coming through. You've got an opportunity to, to return in those searches. And it's understanding what things you might be able to do uh, to make that, to make it possible to appear. And the, the way for, to do that is through, Google, through your Google My Business account. I'm going to ask you sing, an easy question. Put your hands up if you've got a Google My Business account. OK, most of the people around here. Does that mean you've got it verified? Hands again. And would most of you say you've got your profile at 100%? OK, not so good. So the job's not done. So, uh, li like I said, Google My Business is one of the key things that would allow you to take on all of those challenges of appearing in the three-pack and being able to return much better for, for searches near you, now, and open. And one of the things that tr clearly drives it, of the 25, there is 25% of a, of a weighting to Google My Business in terms of how you return in that slide. So I'd like Leonor to talk through some of her practical experiences of using Google My Business. Hello. Um, thank you for having me, Patrick. You're over there now. Um, so my name is Leonor, and I'm the marketing executive with the Blackwatch Castle and Museum, which is a local visitor attraction here in Perth. For those of you who don't know who we are, we're a five-star attraction um, located just off the North Inch. And we tell the story of the Black Watch, which is Scotland's oldest Highland regiment through the Black Watch Museum. We also um, have the Castle Cafe on site and the gift shop. We also run a learning and outreach program. And we also have an annual calendar of events. Probably about two years ago, we started to recognize that our, I should go into this slide. About two years ago, we started to recognize that our digital presence and online experience for visitors needed to be improved. And that led us onto a very steep learning journey in the digital world, which continues today, I must say. Um, we have now redeveloped our website, and we launched that this year. And what we also did as part of that redevelopment was integrate our online shop into it. And that enabled us the capabilities to be able, for our visitors to be able to book online. So they can now book their experiences online with us, and they can also book their events online with us. And we also overhauled our blog so that it was sitting on a separate site, and we moved that onto our website so that the new content that we were putting onto our blog was registering on our website. And as a charity, and we are a visitor attraction, but we're also a charitable trust. We are always looking for cost-effective and easy-to-use tools that will help us to build on the work that we've done and to increase our online visibility and for customers that may be looking to engage with the experiences that we can offer. Um, so whilst we have, which is the reason Patrick's asked me along here today, is just to talk with you as a local um, organization in Perth who are using Google My Business. But what I must stress as well is that we are at the beginning of that journey. Um, we are not experts in using it, but we are finding that it's going to be quite useful for us. So what we thought we'd do today is just talk through the ways that we are using it. Um, and we thought that might be helpful. 
So we started by claiming our business, and a number of you in the room have already done that, and we also verified that with Google. Now, we did that a number of years ago, actually, but with all the new projects that come that happen, as you all know, time can get diverted to other things that are a higher priority. And as with a lot of small organizations, we're working with a small staff team. Um, so once the website was redeveloped, we had the time and the space and the energy to be able to go back and look at Google My Business. And one of the reasons we were doing that, as we settled into the new website and learned how to use it and change the content, we realized that what we needed to do was to be able to build on that work and to optimize what we were doing through Google, get our SEO right, and to make sure that we've got good content going out all of the time. So this part here, some of you will be familiar with, is the Google My Business dashboard. And that allows you to do lots of things that will promote who you are and that Google will pay attention to and share with people that are putting in relevant keywords. Um, posts here um, allows you to, I'll talk a little bit more about that and show you an example of one of the posts that we have started to do. Um, but that allows you to share um, and highlight different events or products that you may be new to your organization and that will come up on your knowledge graph. It also has information where you can fill out basic information about your organization that's useful to um, visitors uh, online when they're Googling your um, organization. Insights is really useful data. Reviews is all of the reviews that your customers are doing about your organization or your business through um, Google. Messaging, customers being able to direct message you. Photographs, bookings, products, which I think we're going to find quite useful going forward. Um, website, users is about who owns the, who's, who has the permissions to use your, your Google My Business platform and create an ad. So this bit here is just in the back office of the dashboard of Google, and that's us starting to populate our basic information section. And I think there's about diff 17 different categories in that that you can fill out. And that's a really good starting place, we've found. Um, it doesn't take too long to fill out, and that information will transfer into your knowledge graph. So we've started, by just, oh, yeah, we've started just up here by filling out who we are, our address, our name, the type of organization that we are. Um, we talk about our opening hours here, which we've found is really important because there have been occasions where we may not have updated that on time. We have summer hours and winter hours, so our hours are changeable. Um, and visitors will look at that knowledge graph and will say, mm, but your hours say you're open at this time. Um, so it's just important that you do um, keep that up to date. You can also add in special hours to let the visitors know, um, for example, winter closing or if you're closed on Christmas Day or New Year. Um, your telephone number, it asks here for um, a shortened version of your organization and we've just chosen to use our Twitter handle there. And then it goes on to ask different things about um, um, any menus that your organization might have, any products, accessibility information, um, the, the type of crowd that you're trying to draw or the type of target audience you're trying to draw in. Um, and then it also gives you an opportunity later down to talk about your business. So that kind of area we've used is just what's unique about who we are and what we can offer. We've not talked about any special offers or promotions. It's really just about this is the type of experience that we can give you. Um, another section that we found quite interesting to use is key insights. And it gives us, for, for us, we found four different departments of it really quite interesting. It can tell us how customers are searching for us. It can also tell us where they are searching for us, whether that be Google Search or through Google Maps. And it also tells us our customer actions, so what they do once they find us. And it also lets you see how viewed your photographs are. So what kind of impact your visual portrayal of who you are is having on the audience that's finding you. Um, so I just thought I'd run through some information that's on our site so you can get an idea of how to use it. So this section here is showing us 
what customers or the keywords or the phrases that customers are using to try to find us. And for us, it's the Black Watch, Black Watch, Black Watch Museum, which kind of consolidates what we thought. However, we were a little bit surprised we in one respect that we have been promoting our children and family events quite a lot lately. And we had hoped that a little bit further up, what people were looking for was what events are happening in Perth, what kids' events are happening in Perth, um, also events on the Blackwatch Castle Museum. But those types of searches are really ranking low for us. People aren't quite using that yet. So that was a surprise, because we thought we were doing a little bit better at that. Um, the next section that we find useful is how customers search for your business. And this graph here shows that we, over the last month, we've had 40,211 Google searches. But it breaks that down to let us understand whether this is a direct search where they are trying to find us using our business name or address, or whether it's a discovery search where people are putting in certain terms to try to find us, like a product name or a service or an experience, or whether it's a branded search. And for us, just marginally, you can see that people are finding us by discovery using product names or the black watch or keywords like what we described rather than the direct business name. Um, and I think 58.4% of that search total is from discovery searches. The insights is also really useful in that it tells us what customers are doing when they come to us. It tells us how many actions we had. And when I last looked at our actions, we had 1,220 actions. And that included us being able to say what customers were coming to our website, what customers were requesting directions to come and visit us, and what customers were then choosing to use a direct call or telephone call through to our organization. And this section, though I don't have it up here, will also let you see, according to Google data, what your busiest times is um, throughout the week, and also what the average duration of a visitor is coming to your attraction. And for us, our popular times can fluctuate over the week. Um, but generally, the visitor, um, according to Google, dwells with us for about one and a half to two hours. And that's not hugely out with what we had thought. But it's just nice to be able to look at some hard data and to be able to match that against what your perception is. So moving on to reviews and posts and direct messaging, which are also options the Google platform allows you to use. Reviews, for us, we get a lot of our online reviews through TripAdvisor and Facebook and Twitter and email. Um, but we are now becoming very aware um, that they're also coming through Google. Um, and we've been finding that the Google reviews tend to be a little bit shorter than the TripAdvisor reviews, which can be very long. Um, and they also tend to perhaps sometimes not give you text comments, but will give you a star rating. And for us, this has really meant that they're a little bit easier to reply to than some of the TripAdvisor reviews. Um, and the last few reviews will also appear in your Google Knowledge Graph. So when someone's um, searching for you and your little knowledge graph is at the side of that search, you'll have your maybe three or four reviews from Google sitting there for them all to see. You can turn on notifications. So Google My Business gives you the opportunity to be able to say you want notifications when a customer has left a review, either through email or text message which I guess can help you to not fall behind with the reviews and to be able to reply to them promptly. Posts is a, um, one that's, that Google now offers, and we've only just started using posts. This is an example of one of the posts that we just did recently, um, and it's really easy to use. Uh, Google talks you through all of the processes to use it. It asks you for an image. It'll optimize that image for you. It asks you for a title. Here we are um, talking about the fact that we've just launched the Black Watch Christmas card. Uh, it asks you for the price and some text about that. And then it also allows you some great um, uh, call to action buttons. And the one that we've chose to use here is buy. And then you can link the URL directly to the place on our website where you would buy that. So it's giving your customer, your visitor, an update on 
things that are happening within your organization and also giving them a direct link so that they don't have to work out how to then find that on your website. We've also used posts for events. Um, we have a winter festival coming up. So as well as using our social media and our blogs to promote that online organically, we're also starting to use Google My Business. But these do last for a specific length of time. So when you do it, it's not there for weeks. You have to go back and revise it um, and just look at how long it's lasting on your knowledge graph for. The event will last longer, I understand. I believe that the event, we're, well, our, our event has not happened yet, so I'll check when it ends. I believe that the event will continue to stay on your knowledge graph from when, right up until the time that the event takes place. I missed anything there. Oh, direct messaging. It also gives you the option for your customers to be able to direct message you from the knowledge graph. We haven't chosen to do that as of yet. It may be something that we do do in the future. Um, but what you need to do is download an app from a site like Google Play, and that'll allow you to have the um, mechanism or the interface for them to be able to message you directly. Um, this is certainly something to think about because I guess that customers could message you from Google at any time and it's whether your business can accommodate that degree of responsiveness. Looking at bookings, bookings has been really useful. I think you highlighted the booking option there. Um, sorry, just up here. Um, on our Google Knowledge Graph, we've been able to utilize that facility so that customers can directly buy tickets from our Knowledge Graph. Um, we sell tickets on our website now, as I mentioned, but also on TripAdvisor. And TripAdvisor is one of Google's recognized platforms to be able to link to the Google My Business. So what it will do here is it will show you all of the tickets that have been bought through this, and it will, have, it will give you the customer name, it will tell you when they booked it, the price that they paid for it, and it will also give you an email notification. So you know that you have that ticket booked and you can expect that visitor coming on the day that they've bought the ticket from. Um, also, photographs is a really useful option, I think, um, to be able to put your own pictures up. It tells you the number of views that you've had on each picture and when that was put up. And it also enables you to filter um, different elements of your visual presentation, depending on what your um, organization or business is. It will also allow customers to put um, photographs up as well. So while that's really, really good, it's also, um, I'm sure you'll be aware, not all pictures that customers take are exactly what you might want to have up online. Um, so putting your own management pictures up allows you to portray um, what you offer in a way that you want it to look and feel. Um, Another option that it now offers is products or product, product catalog. And we have just begun to use this. And we, for us, we're going to find it really useful in terms of um, organically raising brand awareness about the fact that we do now have our gift shop online and the type of products that we sell um, in our gift shop and having that you know, right up there for our customers when they are just visually searching for us. Um, we have just recently uploaded just five um, very black watch centric um, products and it, this is the product how would I describe it? Th this is the graph that um, Google asks you to input your information in so it's really really easy to do it you put in the product name you create the category you give a description of what that product is and you indicate what the price is and down at the bottom here it gives you that what do you want your customer to then to do? So the call to action. And for us, um, we have used the buy button. This just lets you see what your product catalog will start to look like in your back office. Um, and this here is just an example of one of the products, our Red Harkill Tartan Scarf, which we put online. Um, this will let you see that it looks like this just in your Google Knowledge Graph there. So, I guess what that does is just give you an overview of how we as a local organization that have a small staff team 
and who need to be very cost effective with how we make ourselves visible online are using and hoping to use more Google My Business. Like I say, we're at the start of that journey, um, but I think we're going to find it quite useful and I think Google will start to like us yes, for it. Yes, recognize you, exactly. So we're sort of opening up. It's, it's a fairly simple, practical exercise. I have to say, having gone into lots of business, done some reviews, it's the most ignored part I have seen in anyone's business and digital strategy. Even down to the fact that if you, one of the insights that I quite often see in here is that images are often the starting point of a person's search in terms of how they find your business. And the number of, number of times I've come across Google My Business listings or knowledge graphs with little or no owner photographs in there. Google have just started, um, and it's farther down in any page ranking, um, putting in a, a, a listing for uh, Google for image returns. So they are really, really developing image recognition in a very, very fast-paced way. Because they recognize you, I, all of us, look at things from a visual perspective. So more and more how they will um, render and return your business will be influenced by the quality of the images that you've got on. So there's the, the, the onus for us to have really, really quality images going forward is so strong and is something you, that as a tactical thing is something that you, could, you should consider right now and going forward. So we'd like to throw this out uh, to you if there's any questions. Maybe you've covered everything. Hopefully we have. <laughs> but if there's any sort of simple, practical questions from your own business, um, just raise your hand and we'll get a mic over to you. So don't be afraid to ask. We've got one here in front. Anyone else like to ask a question just so I can? Right, I've got you clocked. Hi. Um, Hi. When you're putting up tours on Google, is it better to list them as events or products? So part of your Google My Business profile allows you to categorize. I think if we flick back the way, what your business is about. Um, see that little bit up here? So it'll ask you to categorize what you are. So you're a tour business. You know, we're not, each business will be very different. It gives you some drop downs. Actually, the insight I've had from Google is that don't try and choose too many categories. Google wants a very quick definition of your business. So then in terms of, of whether you, you, you uh, you categorize yourself. So that's categorization of your business. Then you've got opportunities to display exactly what it is that you deliver. Um, I would suggest if you're a tour, that that's the description you have. Because one of the things you shouldn't create is doubt in Google's mind. It makes them a bit human. But everything is returned in nanoseconds. So if, for example, your, your conversation on your website talks about a tour, but in some way that you're, you're on your knowledge graph, you're saying events, that's enough to create some doubt in the return process that slows how well you'll be ranked and will maybe bring your ranking down. So really, really clear about what you do. Don't try and play it clever, because the one thing Google has got really, really good about is recognizing when someone's stuffing it or making it appear something it's not. Hope that answers your question somewhat. It's hard to understand the driver for your or your, your question, but I can also pick up with you off, off the stage. Do you do tours um, regularly? Oh, okay. I think doing that as an event would be a great way as well, having it on as an event and pushing it out that way. And I think in this section here, the info section, there's also a bit for services. And in there, you can talk about your tour and how much it is as well. Okay, there was a lady right back there, who's like, and there's a gentleman close by on there. Hi, sorry, this might be a bit of a daft question, but it's something that's that. been bothering me. Um, I work at um, the University of St Andrews in museum service, and our museum is closed at the moment for refurbishment, and we have yeah. a Google My Business account. Um, but would it be better to create a new account, a completely new account for the new museum because it's going to be renamed? Or 
Can we? It's going to be renamed. Uh, yeah. So okay. should that's we? a significant change. Yeah. Is it better I, to start I, from scratch? I wouldn't like to advise you on one or t'other. I think it's something I'd like to research. But the norm is, you know, you sell a business, you take ownership of it, you might be refurbing it, and so on. You 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 would update the profile and hold that profile because it will have some equity. To completely throw it out, I'd be slightly worried because it will have it will be linked and referenced and have some authority. Um, it's if you're making significant changes, there might be good reason. I mean, one of the things that Google looks for is, is, is a thing called NAP. So that's name, address, phone number, consistency. So that's back to that piece. They're trying to recognize something very, very quickly. And if you don't have that consistency across all of your platforms, but if you fundamentally change Google, your Google Knowledge Graph, that's going to change your ranking authority straight away. So, it's, a, it's something I, I can't give you an answer directly, worth, worthy of researching a bit more, and I might could happily do that with you going forward. There was, oh, sorry. sorry. It's just to partially answer this, because I've had this experience. We, okay, whether great. it's right or wrong, um, we changed the name of the business. And we opened an, a new account with the new name, but because both of the businesses are at the same address, when you search them, Initially, it was the old one coming up, but the more I've added to the new one, okay. it's gone up and up and up the ranking. So you hold on to your original and, yeah. and let them run. I don't yeah. know if that's right or not. Well, I do know having two listings it doesn't help. And remember, what we're, not, what we're not talking about is your overall search engine optimization and your ranking, but this has a 25% weighting. So it's, that's important. You need to get it right. If you've got more than one listing, you're creating confusion. But if you, as you say, you're gradually man getting to a point. And we've talked about where the Black Watch is a couple as well, or has had three and has looked to take yeah, one out. So. We had three listings at one point because we rebranded um, when we reopened after redevelopment in 2013. So the original listing was called Balhousie Castle, and we've removed that now. But at the moment, we have two listings, and we are trying to remove one of them because it's causing a little bit of um, difference. And depending on what search term your visitor uses depends on the Google Knowledge Graph that's going to come up. So while we might be concentrating on populating one particular one, the other one still might raise its head. Um, which, so we're working on trying to Getting sort that out. Right. There's a <laughs> gentleman here, on the, and there's a lady over on the left. And I think we'll finish after that, because I think we've got, yeah. OK. <laughs> We've got a whole crowd <laughs> waiting to get in here. Let them wait. Just <laughs> Hi there. Um, just wondering if you had any advice around how regularly you should be posting on Google My Business or what kind of posts those should be. So I'd take maybe one out of every five or six for Facebook posts and okay. tend to be a bit more salesy than All right. as I miss out a lot of content. So, so in terms of Google Plus no longer exists. So that's, it's no longer a social media account. This is like an opportunity to talk to people on your page one, because that's where your knowledge graph appears. So look, at, and it, it roughly lasts about two weeks, the post, that you can do it. So there isn't, it's all about what things, it's, it's what new things, what, um, what new products, if there's any thing. new content that yeah. you might be particularly proud okay. of and want to push out organically, for example, a blog that you might have done or a new section on your website, you really want to highlight that and show that to visitors, particularly if it's quite current, you could use that. I mean, for us, it's been um, a mixture of things. So events and maybe something new, a new tour that we might be offering and some information about a new product that we might have in the shop. And I think it's up to yourself to decide what's more important to your organization that you want to show your visitors. Okay. Sorry, we've been told to cut now, but anyway, if you want to speak to me afterwards, more than happy to pick up with you. Anyway, thank you very much.